HIV first came to attention in the early 1980s, uh, actually in Los Angeles, when uh, a number of gay men presented with some diseases which are usually associated uh, only with people with very advanced states of immunodeficiency, that is to say, their immune systems were extremely weak. So the most common ways HIV is transmitted, there's really three. There's sexual transmission, there's injection drug use transmission, and then there's tr transmission from an infected mother to her newborn baby. So the first place it goes um, are in, is in lymph tissue, which are basically a series of sponges and strainers that are found throughout the body. We t normally talk about lymph nodes as the glands in the neck, but they're actually all over, and in, in fact, in the in the intestines, there's an enormous amount of lymph node tissue, and that's actually thought to be one of the first places that HIV goes and, and begins to replicate. Um, the sequence of events after someone's exposed to HIV, if they're going to get infected, is it takes about 24 hours for it to get across a, a membrane surface, and then 48 to 72 hours to get to these lymph nodes. And then um, the earliest we've seen it is about five days after the exposure, you're able to detect it uh, reproducing itself in the blood. HIV is a retrovirus. In the bloodstream, it typically will bump into uh, T4 cells or CD4 cells. But once uh, HIV uh, is exposed to a T cell, which is the type of cell most vulnerable to infection, the virus uh, binds to a molecule on the surface of that T cell called CD4. Uh, CD4 receptor cells are important because that's what the virus has an attachment to. Uh, it attaches to the CD4 main receptor as well as a co-receptor. There are one or two types of co-receptors it will attach to. But CD4 itself is not the portal of entry for the virus into the cell. It's kind of the landing pad where the virus lands and attaches. And then the virus then, part of the virus, changes shape and the virus binds to a structure which is adjacent to CD4 on the T-cell surface and that's called the chemokine receptor. Once it gets into those cells, it injects its genetic material into those cells and then in a very sort of sinister process, it uses its own enzymes, its own machinery, to turn that uh, genetic material into something that can be inserted into human chromosomes. And in doing so, it sort of pirates human chromosomes and then uses the body's natural replication machinery to replicate itself. Mm -hmm.